Detail preserving upscale is a kind of a unique effect that I feel like gets overlooked a lot, but we can find it under the distort category. And what this effect does is basically a better job at scaling up low resolution images. It's a little render intensive, but I'll show you why it does a better job. This photo has a lot of detail in it, all these little tick marks, all the numbers around the watch face, and it is a very high resolution image. If I go into this pre-comp and scale it up to 100%, it has a lot of detail. This is not a low resolution image that I would ever need to scale up. But what I'm going to do is artificially scale this down. So I'm gonna take my composition settings, which is 1920 by 1080, and I'm gonna divide that by four so that it is much smaller. And I'm gonna fit this photo to the width of the comp by going into transform fit to comp width. So now this photo appears to be much lower resolution. If I zoom in here, we're losing a whole lot of those details. Now, this is kind of an extreme example, but stick with me. Back in this main comp, you can see how small this photo actually is now. And before I even apply detail preserving upscale, I'm just gonna fit this to the comp width again. So go to transform, fit to comp width, and it is much softer, right? If I zoom in to 200% magnification, we're really getting a lot of soft edges and the characters in here are really hard to read. You can't even really make out what it's saying. So I'm gonna take a snapshot of this state and then I'll undo so it's back down to its 100% scale. And I'm gonna apply the detail preserving upscale effect to it. Now right at the top, we have two buttons, fit to comp width or fit to comp height. Now this layer is the same aspect ratio as my comp, so either one's gonna do the same thing. But if I click on one of them, it basically fits the width of the image to my comp. But you'll notice that the transform controls are still here on the layer. They're not at the outer edges, and that's because this is an effect. It's leaving the bounds of the layer where it was. It's not affecting the actual scale of the layer, but it's affecting the scale of the contents. So we've now blown this up to 400% scale. Let's compare that to the snapshot. If I click and hold on this, you can see the difference. I'll turn that off and on so we can see that back and forth. And it becomes a little bit more apparent what this effect is doing, especially if you look at this text right here. So regular scale up, a lot softer. Detail preserving up scale, a little bit sharper. I'm not exactly sure what's going on behind the scenes with this effect, but to me it looks a little bit like the unsharp mask effect, where it's finding points of contrast and adding a little bit more contrast to those areas. We're obviously not bringing back all of that detail, but like I said, this is a very extreme example. Now we have a few other controls in here. The scale has been set to 400% because that's what it needed to be to fit to the comp width, but you could change this to whatever number you want. There's this option to reduce noise. If I increase that, then it's just going to change how it's upscaling the image. And unfortunately in this case, it does kind of make everything look a little bit posterized and muddied together. So I'm gonna leave that reduce noise all the way down. And then we have a detail slider. So if I increase this from 50% up to say 100%, then we get a little bit of that pixelation back and it's not smoothing things out quite as much. If I turn that detail all the way down, then we're really losing a lot of that detail. And it again looks a little bit almost like it's posterized. I'll set that back up to 50%. And then finally we have an alpha option, which is set to by cubic by default, but we can also change that to detail preserving as well. And on this particular photo, it doesn't really do anything because there is no alpha channel. It's just a bunch of solid pixels. But if I were to bring out my logo, this does have an alpha channel and I'll just shut off the photo for a second and let's artificially scale this down again, this time using the transform effect so I don't have to pre-comp it and I'll just scale this down to 25%. So it's much smaller now, much softer alpha channel. And if I bring out the detail preserving upscale effect one more time and scale this up by 400%, Again, this is an extreme example and I would never need to do this on a vector logo, but if I go to the alpha setting and change it to detail preserving, it handles the anti-aliasing on that alpha channel a little differently. So you might be wondering when would I use this effect? And the answer really depends on what you're trying to do. One really great use of this effect is scaling up SD footage into HD footage or HD footage into 4K footage. It is artificial, but it has lots of little calculations going on in the background that are gonna give you a better result, in most cases, than just scaling it up with the transform controls. But that's detail preserving upscale in a nutshell. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.